Thank you for joining us at Prophecy in the News today. I'm your host, Kevin Clarkson. We're joined in our studios by Dan Goodwin. Good to greet you, brother. Good to be here again. Well, just exciting days, exciting topics we're talking about. Uh huh. You're uh, known to a lot of our viewers, but if somebody new is watching and doesn't know you, I'll just mention you are with God's Final Jubilee uh, Ministries and uh, an author, a speaker, conference leader, uh, Old Kentucky evangelist. Uh, janitor and uh, <laughs> things like that, too. A little bit of everything. Well, you've got a fascinating book uh, looking at some of the mysteries of the Bible, and we've already had the pleasure of having you uh, on and discuss some of those with you. Today, we're going to talk in this show about the mystery of paradise. A lot of people don't have a real clear picture of uh, what happens after death and the, kind of the understanding about the Old Testament Sheol and the idea of Gehenna and all. I'm using those biblical words, but... Uh, we're going to wade into a little bit of that today because it really has some bearing on how we interpret Scripture. It is, and it ha- and affects some things prophetically. Indeed, it does. Uh, we're going to be specifically looking at the concept of paradise, right? Which, as I understand, is a you know Persian word that described a beautiful park, but Jesus used that word on the cross, right? And I'd like to start with that scripture and okay. kind of let you take us from there. But in Luke 23, Jesus is literally in his death throes. It's uh, it's great effort to speak any words at all as his uh, as his oxygen is so hard to to breathe on the cross. And and as he is addressed by a thief, a fellow man being executed, who says in verse 42, he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, verily, I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise right and in a few short hours they're dead and that was fulfilled that day and jesus went first didn't they they came to break the legs to, so that they would die and they he came to jesus he dead. was already dead because no bone of his body would be broken and he gave up his spirit and he went to paradise didn't go to heaven he went to paradise Went to prepare a place for him. Yep, I yeah, at to least prepare in a, a place for you. In, 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 in that go, day. Uh, yep. On that day. Well, uh, what are some of the mysteries that understanding paradise has unlocked? Well, paradise, paradise is a place, but it's not heaven. Now, it is now. Let me explain it. In, uh, paradise was where people went when they died. We, I, I say it this way. Paradise is where the, the Old Testament saints went. When I say saint, the I don't righteous, mean, right, the what, faithful, you know, right. Some people misunderstand the word saint. If you're born again, you're a saint. Uh, you don't have to be uh, crowned a saint by some religious leader. Uh, a saint, when the Bible uses the word the saints who were in Corinth or the saints in Ephesus, he's talking about the saved people, the, the, the born right, again people. Right. So in the Old Testament, you'll never hear somebody say to be absent from the Lord's to be present. Uh, to be absent from the bodies, be present from the Lord. That's a New Testament saying True. used by Paul. Paul said when you die to be absent, you're, you're immediately going to be with the Lord in heaven because that's where the Lord is. Uh, in heaven, God's dwelling place. God dwells in the dimension of heaven. And uh, not, not the sky, but the right. heaven. Where, you know, an, it's a dimension. Paradise is where people went before the cross. You know, before the Old Testament was over, before the New Testament began and the blood is on the mercy seat, which allows people to go to heaven. You ever wonder why you couldn't go to heaven in the Old Testament? Because in the flesh can no man see God. Mm-hmm. And uh, remember Moses wanted to see God in the Old Testament. You know, Moses, great man of God. Uh, he wanted to see him. God said, you can't. You'll, you'll, because in the flesh can no man see God. Uh, no man can see God and live, the Bible says. Right. What does that mean? It means as a sinner and in the flesh... If I look upon God, I'll be consumed. Right. You know, the you know, Hollywood movie, the what's the movie, the guy with the whip and all that. Oh, the, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, remember that? You know, a lot of when the man, when of, the German opened the ark yeah. and was just see that's where overrun. they that's where they got that. Yeah. Now, I know the movie had a lot of stuff Hollywood that wasn't stuff, right, yeah. Hollywood fluff and all that, but they do get some stuff right, and that yeah. that's right out of the Bible. No man can be in the presence of God and live. You'll mm-hmm. be consumed. Moses, as great a man as he was, he wanted to see God. God said, you can't. But what God did, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll put my hand up. I'll let you see my hinder parts. I don't know what everybody else thinks that means. I I happen to think God gave him the first five books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. You know, 
God, Moses wasn't here for, for Adam and Eve and creation. Right. How right. did he write this? I believe God gave him the hinder parts. Mm -hmm. uh, but God knew that if I let him see my face, uh, that's why he live. saw a burning bush. He saw a figurative thing. He right. didn't see God face to face. Um, no man can see. This is important, by the way, this stuff. What we're talking about right now is important foundational stuff. You can't see God in the flesh. You cannot see God as an unregenerate human being. Right. We've got that's why we've got to be born again. The only way you can be in God's presence is to be born again. Now, the big question comes to the were the Old Testament people born again. Yes and no. And we'll get to that later. But paradise is where people went. The old what we call the Old Testament saints. Those are people who were believers in the Messiah, trusted Messiah, uh, who was going to come one day. They knew about him and uh, they knew he was going to pay their sin debt and they had their faith in him. And when they died, just like David, David said, uh, well, there's a little baby that died. He says, he shall not come to me, but I shall go to him. Where right. was David's baby? He was in paradise. Right. And we're all babies. Babies don't go to hell. Babies are be beyond the age of accountability and making a choice. And God is just. He doesn't send them to hell, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so paradise is where people went uh, before the before Christ had taken his blood to the mercy seat and uh, to where God says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. So uh, they went to a place called paradise, a dispense, uh, a dimension called paradise that's no longer there, by the way, because when Jesus dies on the cross, he goes down there, mm -hmm. spends three days down there and uh, he leads captivity captive. He comes back uh, and, and sees Mary on Sunday morning, Indeed. tells her not to touch me, touch me because I'm the high priest. You, you, know, you can't touch the high priest. I've, I've got to send to my father. I've got to take yet. the blood. That's when the Old Testament saints left paradise mm -hmm. because now the blood's on the mercy seat. Uh, now they get the fulfillment of their trusting Messiah and now they're born again. They go to heaven and uh, and then he comes back to the upper room Sunday night and he breathes on them. Luke, uh, I think it's Luke, tw uh, John 20 or John 21, somewhere in there. John 20, I guess it is. And he says and he breathes on them. By the way, he comes through a, a, port a portal also. He just walks through the wall. Appeared in the room. Yeah. And uh, uh appears in the room and he, and he breathes on them and says, receive you the Holy Ghost. What does he mean by that? Well, these guys, had they not trusted the Messiah? Sure they had. Uh, but they hadn't had the indwelling yet. The indwelling of the Spirit couldn't come until the blood's on the mercy seat. Right. And uh, th this is deep stuff here. It's but it's very true. God could not put his Spirit permanently in right. a human until... The blood was covering right. all of the Does that mean the they sin. weren't saved? No, they were saved kind of like the you Old buy Testament. a house on yeah. contract. It's not yours until the final payment's made. Final payment was made when the blood's put on the mercy seat. Then the Old Testament people have that regeneration happen. That's why Jesus goes down and he preaches to them. And he leads captivity captive, gives gifts unto men. They go to heaven. He comes back uh, to the upper room Sunday night and uh, breathes on them. That's where they get it. And uh, the rest is history. Uh huh. So paradise. Now we we don't need to delve too deeply into it, but you know that Old Testament word of Sheol, the realm of the dead. Half of the well, you can't say half, but a portion of right. it was for the righteous dead. In other words, there was two. And then there was the wicked side. Right. And that is still that hasn't been emptied. That's yet. still there. That's still waiting. That's going to be emptied as well. The great white throne. The great white throne. When when hell and the grave give up those that are in. They hell. give up the dead and then and they of course stand the, and lake of fire to the lake of is fire. the final resting place wherever that right. is. Right. But, but uh, uh, yeah. to so, distinguish these things is helpful. Yeah. So in other words, when the rich man uh, Lazarus dies, he's carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, which, by the way, is another word for paradise. Same place. We call it Abraham's bosom. Right. Paradise is only mentioned three times, I think. About you read one of them. Yes. Revelation uh, is one of them, and there's, there's there's three places where paradise. Paul is caught up in the paradise. Right. That's what he says. Um, but the one that par where where Paul went was not where the Old Testament saints were, because when Paul comes along, that one's already moved. Paradise it's is moved. Now, Jesus took it. It's now <laughs> in it's now into in the in the third heaven. And it's kind of like church. We say church isn't a building. It's it's a people. It's a, right. Paradise is really uh, an abode for people, not yep. a specific geographic location. Yep. So. All right. Well, what other mysteries would you say this unlocks for you? Uh, well, mysteries. There's three things here that I'll, that I'll share with your, your viewers here. What what does all this mean? This means, number one, the Old Testament people put their faith in the sacrifices of the day, but they also, uh, that those sacrifices represented the fact that Christ had paid, was going to pay their sin debt. 
I'm not saying they understood everything, but these guys understood more than the, the, than some people think they did. Uh -huh. You know, there's a movement out. There's a lot of people who think that the Old Testament people had to keep the law and they had to keep these sacrifices and there was no eternal security. This is what they believe. Yeah. Uh, I do not believe that. Yeah. I don't know what you believe, and then, then, but I do not believe that. I believe God's not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. I believe the way to heaven is the same from Adam to the last human being. It's by grace through people. faith. That's right. Hebrews 11. Yeah. They were all by faith and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Right. And it, so there's faith with uh -huh. Noah. And the uh, Bible says Abraham believed God and it was counted him for That's righteousness. exactly right. What's different is the born again thing. You must be born again. Mm -hmm. uh, and people say, well, they didn't they didn't get born again in the Old Testament. Well, then they're not going to heaven then because Jesus said you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Right. And so, by the way, he said that to a Old Testament Pharisee of the law. Yes, he did. And we were going to get to this later, but we may as well hit it. Let's hit it. Uh, the most shocking passage in the Bible that I've shared with these dis what I call the dispensational crowd. And they're good people. I'm yeah. not mad at them. I call them hyper dispensationalists. They, they believe in salvation today right. in our generation like we do. But they believe the Old Testament saved different and they believe during the tribulation they're saved different. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that. Yeah. I believe in the everlasting gospel that's mentioned in Revelation. The everlasting. It's always Amen. the same. Amen. So in uh, in the Old Testament, yes, they, they had the sacrificial thing, the tabernacle, the temple, and then they brought and those were types and shadows that pointed to that's Christ. That's right. It's all they were. They were shadows. And the book of Hebrews figures. bundles that together, old and right. new. They'll t they'll they'll tell us things like, well, Abraham didn't know anything about the resurrection. Well, yeah, he did because Hebrews tells us he did. Yeah, he believed that God was going to raise Isaac after he killed him with the knife. By the way, God had the God had to yell twice. Abraham, Abraham, put the knife down. Abraham was going to kill him mm -hmm. happily because he believed God was going to raise Isaac from the dead as a figure yeah. of the one to come. That's right. What does that mean? That means Abraham knew a lot more than we thought he knew. He knew about the resurrection. Yeah. So these Old Testament people, when they perform these rituals and things in the in the tabernacle or in the temple, depending on what age they lived in there, they understood that the, 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 the blood of them goats didn't save them. The blood of the lamb didn't save them. They, they were types and figures pointing to the one that would save them. Those people that believed those things were what I call Old Testament saints. They were saved just like I am, only they're looking for a coming savior. I'm looking back at a Savior that already came and shed his blood. And it's coming again. The difference is, when I got saved in 1981, July 4th, I immediately got the indwelling of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. They did not. And we, you mentioned that a little bit ago, yes. uh, about the Spirit coming upon them. Um, they were just as saved as I am, but they didn't have the indwelling, regenerated Spirit. Now, John chapter 3, everybody knows John chapter 3, Nicodemus. Every Sunday school boy and girl has heard the story of Nicodemus coming by night to, to see Jesus. And uh, uh, what, what we've all missed in that story is that's not the New Testament. I know it says in Matthew and Mark and I know it says the New Testament begins in chapter right. one, but it doesn't. The New Testament doesn't begin till the renting of the veil in the temple mm -hmm. and the blood, the shedding of blood. Jesus himself said uh, 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 the, uh, in, or I think it's in Hebrews it says that uh, uh, no testament is of any value until the death of the testator. It is in Hebrews. Uh, the, the testator has to die before the will is good. The New Testament didn't officially begin until the death of the testator. And I think it's even clearer to understand that when we, we substitute the word the new covenant. The new covenant. Because uh, some people think of the testaments as the writings and the, right. the old and new book. But. The word testament means covenant. And right. Jesus, right before he went to the cross the night before, holds up the cup and said, it's the new covenant in my blood. Yep. And so that's when it inaugurates when that blood was shed the next afternoon. Right. And as you said, that the veil was torn in two yep. and access to God was open. Now, what the importance of understanding that is my little hook here that I when I talk to the uh -huh. dispensational crowd, they can't answer this. And I'll ask them, did Nicodemus, is he in heaven? They won't answer that. Well, we don't know. We don't know if he got saved or not. But wait a minute, if he is in heaven, what did Jesus tell this Old Testament Pharisee that he had to do to go to heaven? Three times, not once, not twice, three times he said, Nicodemus, ye must be born, be again. born again. Now let's remember who he's talking to. An Old Testament Pharisee of the law, during the Old Testament, before Christ went to the cross, 
They're under the Old Testament. They're still keeping the Sabbath. They're still going to the temple. Jesus is, is keeping the Sabbath. Jesus goes to the temple. They're in the, they're in the Old Testament. The Old Covenant. And the third time, here's the crux of it. The third time he looks at Nicodemus and he rebukes him. Remember what he said? He said, Art thou a master in Israel and knoweth not these things? In other words, you're a Pharisee of the law. You have the scriptures. You've been educated. You're a master of these things, uh, just like your fathers and your fathers before you. And how can you not understand ye must be born again? So the Old Testament people have to be born again also. What I think everyone has missed is the fact that they're not born again immediately in the Old Testament like you and I are. Mm -hmm. Just like they didn't go to heaven when they died like you and I will. They went to paradise because they're not born. They didn't have the, I call it, I call, they don't have the fulfillment of their born again experience. They did the same thing I did. They trusted the Messiah, yeah. but they didn't get what I got. Uh, they didn't get the, si the final deed to the property like you and I did. Um, we're already seated together in heavenly places, the Bible Amen. says. It's, it's done. They went down there awaiting the Messiah to come, and he comes after he leaves the cross. Uh, the threefold being, his body went to the tomb. His spirit went to the Father, into thy hands command my spirit. His soul goes to a third place. Soul went to, uh, I believe, paradise, Abraham's bosom. And he spent three days and three nights in paradise, the heart of the earth. The Bible says he preached to the saints in, uh, in the heart of the earth there. And the, I think it's Colossians or Ephesians says he led captivity captive, mm -hmm. gave Ephesians gifts unto four. men. And uh, I always get it confused, Colossians and Ephesians, but uh, one or the other there. And so I always say it's either Colossians or Ephesians. You're going to go look for yourself. So. Uh, but you knew it. So, so he leads captivity captive. I right. think that's the, um, that's the uh, resurrection of, uh, of the, the souls of those men and, and that women. And that was predicted in Psalm 68. I mean, that was quoting the Old Testament. So yeah. it, it, it had foretold that he would lead captivity captive. Right. And so, so that's paradise. Uh, paradise is no longer there because of uh, the fact that the blood was shed. The blood's on the mercy seat. But this affects a lot of things. This affects the fact of uh, uh, what did people know in the Old Testament? Did they know about Christ? Of course they did. They didn't know him by the name Jesus, but uh -huh. they, they knew that a Messiah was going to come. My goodness, the brazen altar, when, uh, the brazen snake, when Moses held up the snake in the wilderness. You can't tell me that they didn't know what that represented, that the, that represented a Messiah that was going to be broken for them and die for their sins. And uh, of course they knew that. Hebrews tells us very plainly that the Old Testament people, the blood of goats and of bulls uh, could never make perf anybody perfect, never saved anybody. So what were they doing Amen. them for? They weren't doing it to be saved. They were doing it figuratively to help them understand the gospel and the, and the way to heaven, just like our baptism and Lord's Supper that we do in our gener in the New Testament. It doesn't save you. They're right. figures and types to help us remember some things. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, let me just take a moment and tell you, our viewers, uh, we're visiting with evangelist prophecy teacher Dan Goodwin. Great to have him today. Um, his newest work is called The Mystery of the Jubilee and Other Prophecies Unsealed. Now, let me be clear. Uh, Dan has a book or two exclusively on the Jubilee. Uh, this is only one chapter that deals with the Jubilee. This is a lot of other topics, and that's why we're proud to introduce it here on Prophecy in the News and let you know about it. It's available for $21.95 plus shipping and handling. Uh, if you want to get a, a companion DVD, it goes into much greater depth with Dan live presenting PowerPoint uh, on the seven feasts, the Jubilee, the barley harvest, and the concept of when time shall be no more. These are four full-length presentations. Book and DVD are, are available for a combined price of $42.95 plus shipping and handling. And as always, we say you can get those by calling the 800 number on your screen or going to our website, www.prophecyinthenews.com. And you can go to the online bookstore there and place your order. It's safe, it's secure, it's quick and speedy, and we'll get that right out to you. It'll help you delve deeper into these things. What we're talking about again in this show is the mystery of paradise and really the whole concept of salvation. And uh, we really do. You, we find very often that our understandings of Scripture are very parallel. I, I have uh, believed, and I don't know when the Lord first revealed it to me. I think I was maybe in Bible college myself, but I was beginning to realize, you know, those Old Testament people, they were saved just the same way we right. were. They looked to the Savior who would come. 
we look at the savior who has come and is coming again Mm -hmm. but it's the same blood it's the same jesus it's the same messiah and it's by grace through faith that you are saved right and we're going to prove that right now with the bible yes look what it says here let me just read a bunch of just just i'm just read a part of these verses because we couldn't read them all but uh there's several verses that, that talk about the fact that the gospel was preached in the old testament now, when I use the word gospel, I don't know how you feel about this, Dr. Clarkson, but maybe I'll give you something to think about as well. I think, I think we've been misled about the meaning of the word gospel. Mm-hmm. I was taught all my life the gospel means the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. I no longer believe that. I believe that's the gospel. I believe it's part of the gospel. Mm-hmm. I believe the gospel is the word of God. And I say that because the word gospel comes from two Anglo-Saxon words that mean uh, uh, gospel. Gos is God. Spe- uh, pel- spelling God's spelling see the two words it God's, comes word. God's spelling God's mm-hmm. word if you take the word gospel and you, you look up every place in the Bible the word gospel is mentioned by the way this will help some people and this will help some of the dispensational people if they'll get this the word gospel you look it up all through the Bible try to fit death and resurrection in the context almost never works we, we we've been taught that it means the death and resurrection and that well, therefore, the Old Testament people didn't understand all that, so they, they couldn't have had, it must have been a different gospel. Gospel means God's word. Mm-hmm. The word of God was preached all through the Old Testament. Let me just read a few, uh, some of them here. We'll skim some of these before we run out of time. Um, Ye have heard which was preached to every creature, which doesn't have, if you, if you continue, the Colossians, if you continue in the faith, ground and settled, and be not moved from the hope of the gospel which we have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Isn't that Old Testament and New Testament? Isn't that talking about the gospel? Isn't that talking about the way to heaven there? Mm-hmm. So every creature under heaven has heard this gospel. Uh, what is that gospel? That, G, that a Messiah died for our sins and we place our faith in him and he saves us. Um, uh, now let's go to some Old Testament verses. Isaiah 49, verse 26. All flesh shall know that I am the Lord and, and my, that I the Lord am thy Savior and thy Redeemer. That's Old Testament. Yeah. That's talking about Jesus. Uh, Isaiah 51, and my salvation from generation, but my righteousness shall be forever and ever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Well, that sound, that's Old Testament. That sounds like the same for everybody. Uh, this is so simple. I don't, you know, it just, it's shocking that there's so much of this that's coming up again in, in these last days. I'm hearing this all over the uh-huh. internet, uh, the, 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 the dispensational stuff. Galatians chapter 3 talks about an Old Testament man. Abraham believed God. All scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. What's the heart about that? Saying in these shall all nations be blessed. So um, Acts chapter 10, to him give all the prophets witness. In other words, the book of Acts, they're giving credit that the Old Testament prophets gave witness to the, the New Testament happenings and the Christ dying for our sins. A um, bunch of things here. Psalm chapter 2, kiss the son lest he be angry with thee. I wonder what that's talking about. They didn't know about the Son of God. They didn't know that a Son was going to come and pay the sin to the world. Yes, they, they, knew, they knew a whole lot more than we give them credit mm-hmm. for. Acts chapter 2 again. David speaketh concerning him. Concerning who? The Lord. I forswear the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand. Uh, what did Jesus say for he, in John chapter 5? For had you believed Moses, ye would have believed in me, for he wrote of me. That's right. What's so hard about that? These Old Testament people wrote about the things that we understand in the New Testament. David spoke concerning him. Moses wrote of him. They're told to kiss the son lest he be angry with thee. No doubt who that's talking about. Uh, Philip and Nathaniel. This is interesting. Philip uh, findeth Nathaniel and said unto him, We found him. We found the Messiah of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth. So Philip admits that he learned about the coming Messiah from Moses, Indeed. not John the Baptist, Moses. So the, the Bible's filled with this stuff. And uh, uh, there's, there's a dozen more verses in the book I could read showing that they understood the resurrection in the Old Testament. Abraham understood it. Hey, Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. That's right. And I shall stand with him at the last day. Uh, all through the Bible, this is mentioned, these, 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 these wonderful things. There's one way to heaven from Genesis to Revelation. I'll tell you what, I don't care where you are in Bible history, where you are on the 6,000 years of time, man needs blood and he needs a lamb. He Amen. needs somebody to shed blood for him. 
And that lamb is Jesus Christ who shed his blood, died for the sins of the whole world. And there's not one way for Abraham to go to heaven, not a different way for Moses to go to heaven. Nobody kept the law. Galatians is very clear uh, that the law was not given to save. The law was a schoolmaster to show me that I'm crooked. That's right. It was a ruler. It was a, it was a plumb line to show me that I don't measure up no matter how much law I keep, no matter how good I think I am. I'm not good enough. I don't measure up. The law was given to make me lost. It was not made to save me. So it exposes my need of right, a savior. Right. And that's where Jesus comes in. Right. To bring that born again. And everyone needs to be born again. Everyone that's in heaven is born again, whether you're Abraham, David, Job, King Saul, Lot. It's going to shock some people to find Lot up there. The Bible says in Peter, just Lot. That means, ju- that means he was justified was by faith. Uh, he wouldn't have been you wouldn't have made him a deacon in your church, no. probably. But he was just and he's in heaven today. Amen. Because you don't go to heaven for living good. You go to heaven because you placed your faith in the Messiah that would pay your sin debt. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, paradise, does it have any further uh, further uh, mention in, in the end of things? Well, uh, I believe paradise is in heaven now. And I believe because Revelation, uh, the first verse in the book there, Revelation chapter two, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the, the, what the spirit say unto the churches. The him that overcome will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. There it is. Paradise, the paradise of God. And so, as we said, it's more uh, it's more a collection of the people who have been saved right. than it is a geographic location. Yeah. So there we are. And Amen. I can give you just a quick summary here that I thought your folks would enjoy. Uh, a little a little summary of, of the whole Christian life in a nutshell. Just 30 seconds here. You God bet. created man. Man was created to fellowship with God. Man sinned. Fellowship was broken. God provided a lamb, his own son, that would come in the future uh, uh, and pay the debt that man owed. Until the cross, man trusted that lamb that would come in the future and was saved upon that profession. Ceremonial law, sacrifices were given for figures and types to help man understand and believe. Once Christ came, we trust the Christ who came rather than the Messiah who is coming. Old Testament people had ceremonial law to help them understand and believe. We have the ordinance of baptism and the Lord's Supper to help us remember. Everyone who goes to heaven goes to heaven for the same reason. He's trusted Jesus. He's trusted the Messiah as his Savior. Amen. And even as Jesus turned to that thief on the cross who said, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom, he said, you'll be with me in paradise. If you'll crown Jesus as Lord of your life and believe in him and who he is as Messiah who gave his life for you, you can be saved and be in paradise. Till then, let's keep looking up.